introduction. It's uh, an honor to be here today and I'm really excited to, to join you all virtually. Um, before I get started, just in the spirit of re reconciliation and given the topic of my speech, um, from the WA Off Cyber Innovation Hub, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land throughout Australia and where my office is based on Wadjuk Noongar country and their connections to the land, sea and community. And we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend all of that respect to all Indigenous peoples today. So as Anissa said, she introduced me um, and my background in design thinking and innovation. And today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the human aspect of the cyber industry, as we've had a lot of technical presentations that are really incredible to see the tech that's coming out. And I guess that's the innovation part of my job that I do enjoy. But before we get started, I just wanted to introduce the WA Ost Cyber Innovation Hub. Ost Cyber is an industry growth centre across Australia, and we have a series of national network nodes in most capital cities. So I am the WA node with an outpost in, in the West Coast, and I'm connected to my colleagues across the country and also with some foreign communities to make sure that we're embracing the global aspect of cybersecurity. And that really helps us leverage opportunities for the cyber industry in, in WA and in Australia. And that's really the mission for us cyber is to really grow a vibrant cybersecurity industry in Australia. So if I remember correctly, I was trying to talk about what the WA Aus Cyber Innovation Hub does. So we're headquartered in Perth, Western Australia, in the city of Joondalup. And so we work really closely with some amazing local cyber companies, Edith Cowan University, which has some really great cyber training facilities, and also, also North Metropolitan TAFE, which also has a great TAFE cyber program. So what we do is try and expand export capability for cybers in Perth to grow the local ecosystem, to facilitate connection to innovators, to the right business partners, to new clients and customers, and really foster that growth, and also contribute to the education flow and advocacy for the cybersecurity. As I've seen today, there have been a few topics around how important it is to tell the right message to your board and how to provide the data in a way that non-cybersecurity specialists can understand, and I think that education really is across the entire population from primary schools to high schools in terms of career paths, but also communicating to different roles in any business how important cybersecurity is for any individual. So the main things that we do is partner, build and commercialize. So we foster and maintain strong partnerships to leverage opportunities. We build the current and future capabilities in Western Australia and nationally. And then we catalyze commercialization opportunities. We are attached to Edith Cowan University. So one of our goals is also to help foster startups and to commercialize research in the cyberspace. So if any of that interests you, please do not hesitate to reach out, and particularly if you're based on the West Coast. But if not, I'm happy to connect you to one of my colleagues in the OS Cyber Network. The three things that we focus on, particularly in Western Australia, is critical infrastructure, cybercrime, and big data. So with all of this, my background is in design thinking and innovation. So I've been bringing my perspective to the cybersecurity industry. So this is why I feel semi-qualified to talk about diversity in this space and inclusion. As we all know, sometimes cybersecurity has a certain stereotype. It's the hacker and the hoodie, normally a white guy in a basement. So it's not necessarily an inspirational career path for a young woman to think immediately, yes, this is where I want to be working. But the innovation gave me a tool to enter this space and really use my background and how I can help Perth cybers in particularly think about things differently. And I've really been enjoying the challenge of understanding a new industry, but also bringing my personal skill set and flavor to this space. One of the things that I'm passionate about is design thinking. And design thinking is an innovation methodology which uses the wisdom of different users to design products, services, and processes. So you're really going to your customers, your users, the people who are gonna use the stuff to design your products and services. And in my experience, every time you have a diverse group of participants and everybody looks a little bit different, everybody's come from different backgrounds, you come up with the best innovations and the best ideas. Diversity is a really broad term and it's become increasingly bandied around and popular. The way that we like to think about it at the Hub is that to think about it in a quite inclusive way. So it could be your cultural background, 
your gender, your gender identity, your ethnicity, or your neurodiversity, or even your disability. So really thinking about diversity, not as a checkbox to make sure you have a female speaker on your panel, but what does diversity really mean and why is it helpful? So I did not understand how useful diversity could be until I started facilitating workshops and noticed the patterns that our outcomes were inherently better when I had a diverse participant group. There's been a lot of research done. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit in terms of diversity overall. And then I wanted to drill down into why it's actually important for cybersecurity. In terms of diverse teams, it's not rocket science. And it's been around, I think, since the 80s and 90s, that having people and a, um, a heterogeneous group make better decisions. They focus more on the facts of the situation. They process those facts more carefully. They're harder to persuade and group think occurs less often and they avoid their comfort zone, so they are more innovative. If you link this to business outcomes, diverse teams have better financial performance, better sales targets. Um, McKinsey released a report a few years ago that said that if you have ethnic and racial diversity in your management, you're 35% more likely to hire, have higher financial returns. So gender diversity have 15% more chance to have better financial returns. So from a business outcome, diverse teams really are a no-brainer. I think in our current context with the acute talent shortage that we have and the difficulties of recruiting in this space, building a diverse work environment and an inclusive space also gives you a comparative advantage to your competitors. Particularly with the younger generation we're seeing now, they're choosing employers based on values and work environment. So if we create a safe, inclusive and diverse space, you're more likely to recruit the best and the brightest to your organisation. The reason why I think diversity is so important in cybersecurity is because cybersecurity is so important. Cybersecurity is becoming one of the most important industries in the world to safeguard our homes, our livelihoods, and our values. And in line with that, the demand for cybersecurity professionals is rising globally. There are empty jobs all around the world, and with the increasing hybrid workforce and remote work, there's opportunities for Australians overseas as well. So there are some ways that I believe that diversity and inclusion can solve this talent shortage in the industry, because by recruiting differently, we should be able to fill some of the gaps, because the current pipeline of talent cannot fill the demand that we will have in the workforce. Currently, the, we gen, tend to recruit from just computer science and IT backgrounds. So that's about 70% of cyber talent comes straight from that pool. And that actually disproportionately affects vulnerable populations, according to the World Economic Forum, it means that we're more likely to not be able to recruit women and also immigrants or those who have English as a second language. So they're already kind of left behind in the IT field. So if we're thinking about that, we're already recruiting from a less diverse group of people when we're thinking um, to recruit just from computer science backgrounds. It's also really important if we think about diverse teams and complex problem solving. I don't know if anybody watches the TV show Survivor or has ever thought about who would they bring to a desert island to survive on. But in terms of my perspective, cybersecurity challenges are becoming increasingly prob problematic, complex and difficult and severe. So you really need the best of the best to help you solve these problems. And you need people with different perspectives to help you think about problems differently and to bring their mindset help solve their problems. We don't want any blind spots when we're trying to anticipate what a hacker might do or where the next attack is going to come from. By not having a diverse team, it really robs us of that talent and engaging different parts of the global population in solving these complex problems. So how do you actually do it? You know, it sounds like a no brainer. Hire diverse teams, have people from different backgrounds in the room. It's actually not as easy as you'd think. Um, one of the main barriers to entry from people from different cultural, ethnic or gender backgrounds is just recruiting, getting over that first hurdle. Um, that's, that's a real issue. And also we do have some structural um, inequalities in terms of the number of graduates coming out of cyber degrees at the moment. It's still very, very male dominant. So one of the messages that the WA Cyber Innovation Hub tells 
is trying to inspire the younger generation to actually even enter those, those training programs. But some simple ways things you can take away for your company or you can suggest is when you recruit to really include diversity inclusion as a lens. It is also an opportunity to, to access talent that otherwise couldn't be employed. So if you think about somebody with a disability, the move to remote work enables them to be able to work when previously, if they weren't be able to drive or go to the office, they wouldn't have been included in a potential workforce and we'd be able to tap into that talent. Another way you can do it is um, prioritize retention and the development opportunities of diverse staff. If you have a superstar who comes from a different background and really brings a fresh perspective, invest in that person, provide them with leader opportunities, help grow them, because we do know that that's one of the best ways to get brilliant managers is to, to develop them in-house. I think another way that I find that the hub tries to do and I try to do as a leader is to provide development opportunities, but also speaking opportunities and communication opportunities for everybody. One of the organisations that the WA Off Cyber Innovation Hub works with closely is called WITWA, which is Women in Technology WA, and they're an amazing network. And one of their phrases is, if you can't see her, you can't be her. And I think that goes for anybody. It's, you know, mentoring is not necessarily the way forward, but if you can see somebody who is similar to you in some way and you can identify with that person, it's much easier to imagine yourself being in their position one day and taking that career pathway. And so I think that inspiration element is something that we're all responsible for in some ways to help grow the, the talent that we need globally in order to address these concerns. Being vocal as a leader and being a champion of diversity, equity and inclusion is really essential in my humble opinion. Um, I think, yeah, flexible working environments, I've mentioned, help include people with disabilities. It's also great for integrating women back into the workforce and childcare, part-time roles, and that flexibility is something that's really important and can actually add huge value to your organisation by accessing talent that otherwise wouldn't be in the workforce. According to the Off Cyber Research, we need to find at least 33,500 cybersecurity professionals in the next year and a half. And of those, at least 10,000 of them, 10,000 of those require training. So this brings me to my next point, I guess, around diversity is that cybersecurity professionals aren't necessarily just the technical specialists. We rely on our technical specialists to get the work done, but we do know that now there's so many different careers involved in the cybersecurity industry that we need to be preparing for those and training people for those. And perhaps, the pen tester is not going to be the best at designing a cybersecurity awareness program for a board chair. So thinking about the different skill sets that your organization needs and then being vocal and championing these different pathways. The hub does a lot of talks in schools and in universities to try and inspire people into these future jobs and these non-specialist roles perhaps. So making sure that you have employees who are cyber literate in general cyber hygiene but are also brilliant marketers, communicators, educators, philosophers, people who are involved in cyber ethics, cyber psychology, behavioral change, and educators for young people. All of those really interesting and what I call diverse careers are a new option. And I think we need as an industry to clearly and loudly that we need people in this space. We won't be able to attract the right kind of people to solve the future problems that we have if we're not telling the right story. And I feel that that's a common responsibility and I'm quite excited to see how we can transform this sector. At the moment, Australia has about 27.2% of women in the cybersecurity industry. So that's not that bad. It's better than the telecommunications and media sector, but in terms of what we've seen in all of the data, we want to be moving towards gender equity and really thinking more thoughtfully around diversity and inclusion. So I know that we've run over time today and I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I just wanted to challenge ourselves to think through how important diversity is because we need the best team on our survivor to really challenge the problems that we're going to have. So making sure we include people from neurodiverse backgrounds, different life experiences, different ethnicities to make sure we're bringing a, a, the best team we can to tackle the toughest decisions we're going to have and the complex problems 
and then also taking that responsibility to, to reach out to the communities that we live in and inspire the next generation to make sure that the young women and the young men and people who wouldn't necessarily consider a path into cyber because perhaps they're a born marketer and they didn't think those skills were needed. Um, I think telling that story is really important and I'm happy to do it. And if you'd like to reach out to collaborate on any of these ideas, if you have a different perspective and would like to challenge me as a white woman who's grown up with English as her first language, I'd be happy to hear your perspective. But just acknowledging that we can do more and that I truly believe that a diverse and vibrant cybersecurity industry will really help take Australia to the next step. Thank you very much.